Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be fi talking about uh, finding centroids and the center of mass via composite parts. So alternate methods for finding the uh, centroid. Uh, so, so far we've talked about finding the centroid or center of mass uh, via integration. However, performing these calculations can, uh, by hand can become uh, more complex and become kind of unmanageably difficult as the shapes get more difficult. Uh, so say we've got this kind of arch shape over here. Uh, if I wanted to find this, uh, find the centroid of this shape, the integration, I would need to have a mathematical function for the width and for the height of this object uh, as we move left and right and up and down. Uh, so that can be possible. We can definitely come up with that equation, but it's going to be a kind of complex equation and then integrating a complex equation only kind of makes things worse. All right, so there are other methods. Uh, one solution is to use what's known as the method of composite parts, taking advantage of someone else's work in computing those integrals and kind of using that to your advantage. And another solution is to use software tools. Uh, most CAD software can calculate centroid or center of mass values for you. Uh, so if, I'm not gonna go into that here, uh, but many of these tools do have that functionality. Uh, they kind of do the calculus for you uh, in the background. So what we are going to talk about today is the method of composite parts. That's what we are going to try to use as an alternate method to the integration method. So finding the centroid via the method of composite parts. Uh, and the method of composite parts works by breaking down complex shapes into simple shapes. Uh, so that's the comp composite parts piece of this. And each simple shape is going to have a centroid value in kind of a, a it's going to have a centroid coordinate in a table of values. Uh, so the values in the table were calculated via integration, uh, leaving things like width, height, radius as general variables. So we integrate a circle and leave the radius as r in that uh, whole value. Uh, so for each shape that we are going to be kind of working with, each, each piece of our body, each simple shape, we need to know the area and we're going to need to know the centroid location, x bar and y bar uh, in this. All right, so. The centroid tables. The centroid tables provide a generalized centroid location for a number of common parts. Uh, they are going to need to be adapted to the exact situation you have. Uh, so let's use the figure from the table to determine the location of our triangle centroid. So th say we've got this triangle and we're looking to find the centroid of this triangle in our uh, individual piece. And if we look at the centroid table that we have available with the mechanics map, this is what we have in the table. So C is the location of the centroid, and we have uh, an exact you know, six inches wide, four inches tall for our triangle, but over here we just got B and H. Uh, so it's general width B and general height H. Um, all right, so the centroid location, what I have is it's B over three kind of this way and H over three up. So that is where our centroid location is going to be. All right, so let's look at height first. So h over 3 is one-third of the height. So the height of our centroid would be uh, four-thirds of an inch. So that's going to be our y bar in this case. And our base, uh, so b over 3 is a little more complicated. So this triangle and this triangle are both right triangles, but they're mirror images of one another. So I would take that into account in my calculations as well. Uh, so it's b over 3 kind of from the right angle. So 6 over 3, or so yeah, 6 over 3 would be 2 inches, but it's 2 inches back this way. So it would be 2 inches from this side would be x bar, or that's also 4 inches from the uh, piece over there. So if I go 4 inches over, 4 thirds of an inch up, that's where my centroid location is going to be. That's how I'd use kind of this figure uh, from the centroid table. All right, so let's talk more broadly about the method. We know we're gonna use these tables. It's gonna be a central part of all this. Uh, method of composite parts. So say we've got the area shown below and we're looking to find the centroid of that area using composite parts. So step one, we first need to break down the shape into simpler parts. Uh, specifically, each simple part needs to be something that we have listed in the centroid table. Uh, so if you've got like a hexagon in there, you cannot use the hexagon as a simple shape unless you've got a hexagon in your table. And we don't have that, so we can't use a hexagon. But what we do have in our table, uh, so regular areas count as positive areas, 
and then holes or cutouts are gonna count as negative areas. So what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna have a half circle um, over here, so a semicircle for shape one. We're gonna have a rectangle for shape two. And then we're gonna have a triangular cutout of that rectangle for shape three. So semicircle, rectangle, triangle are is my three shapes. And shape three, like I said, is gonna be a negative area in our calculations. All right, so after we kind of divide it up into pieces, uh, we're gonna want a number of those shapes as well. Uh, we're gonna create a table. So this is gonna be what we need in our table. Uh, so we need to know the area of each shape. Uh, so figure out the area of your semicircle, area of your rectangle, a negative area of that triangle, and also the X bar and Y bar location. Uh, so these are not just the raw values from the table, they all need to be the X bar and Y bar values for that piece relative to a single origin point. So let's put our origin point over here uh, and talk about figuring out X bar and Y bar from there. So let's look at shape one first. Uh, so we need to go to our table, and so this is what the semicircle looks like in the centroid table. Um, so here, we'll notice it's kind of rotated 90 degrees. So we need to rotate that mentally in our head, uh, and we're gonna go with this key piece of the centroid location. So that's the centroid. It's this four over three pi r. And it's coming kind of from the flat side of our semicircle. Uh, so I go one radius over, and then I go back, 4 over 3 pi times the radius this way. So that's where the centroid is here, and I need to do it relative to so that point. What is that point? What is the location of that point relative to my axis over here? So there's a little more math involved, but I can use what I have. If I know the radius, everything is based on that. All right, next for the rectangle, so shape number two, uh, it is pretty simple. So the center of a rectangle is half the base, half the height. Uh, and what I need to do to get there is I'd have to go all the way, kind of one radius through my semicircle, and then I have to go half of the width of my rectangle. So I'd have a radius plus half of the base of my rectangle. All right, so that would be X bar for my shape two. All right, so once we get all of those X bar and Y bar values, uh, we've filled out our table, so assuming we've got all of this filled up. Uh, X bar total is basically going to be area one times X bar one. Uh, and so sum of all these. So area one times X bar one, area two times X bar two, area three times X bar three. All of that goes on the top and then we divide by the total area. So area one plus area two plus area three. That's going to be my overall X bar value. And next we have Y bar. So I do the same thing except using the y value. So area one times y bar one, plus area two times y bar two, plus area three times y bar three. Divide that again by the total area. All right, so for a volume, so we've talked about for an area, uh, the centroid calculations for a volume follow the same process, except we're gonna be using volumes in place of areas, and we're gonna be finding three coordinates. So we're gonna have an x bar, a y bar, and a z bar now. Uh, for all of the individual pieces and also total-wise, so three calculations. So here's our, our volume. We've got kind of a cone on top of a cylinder. Um, and so we need the volume for shape one, our cone, volume for shape two, our cylinder, and then X bar, Y bar, and Z bar for each of those uh, values. So you can look those up again um, and just do be careful. It's a little more difficult to visualize all this stuff in 3D. Uh, but it's the same general process. And so in the end, uh, it's gonna be more or less the same calculation. So uh, volume one times X bar one plus volume two times X bar two over the total volume. Uh, same thing except with Y, same thing with, except with Z locations. So that'll give you the overall X location, Y location, and Z location of your 3D centroid. And then finally, center of mass. So the center of mass calculation for composite parts is the same as the volume calculation, except now we're gonna be using mass in place of the volume. So say we've got two different materials, I've got like a brass cone on top of an aluminum cylinder. Uh, I'd come up with my table and it's gonna be mass instead of volume. This would all be the same. 
and in my calculations, it would be mass 1 times x bar 1 plus mass 2 times x bar 2 over the total mass of my object. All right, so that's the calculations for centroids in 2D, centroids in 3D, and center of mass via composite parts. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.